Okay, 11.22 a.m. December 1st of 2006. Well, well, well. Apparently I don't write in this journal unless I'm A, sick, and B, headed to Baltimore to try and convince the staff at Par Excel that I'm healthy as a horse. Tuesday was when I made the rounds, calling every research center within reach of my telephone, talking to recruiters and doctors and nurses in as professional like and tone as I can muster, and leaving messages where they didn't answer to the tune of, Hi, my name is Alexander Spencer. I was calling to see if you had any studies for healthy volunteers that I could screen for, or where I was more familiar. Hi, Karen, this is Alex. Just wondering if there was anything coming up. Call me back. I typed notes from each call into my computer, saying who I talked to, what they had, all the details like procedures, side effects, overnights, blood draws, return visits, or when I should call back so they'd know more. I filled my digital calendar with all my appointments. The taste test for an energy drink that I was supposed to do today up in Ben Salem. The Monday and Tuesday afternoon visits to the smell and taste lab to sit blindfolded in a room while some guy named Chris did or didn't fill up the room with an odor. I hated to think of the possible methods. The third and last morning visit, Monday, to lay back in an easy chair in a dark room while Susan cuts the circulation in my, off in my right arm for two periods of five, two minutes, scanning my gel-coated elbow with an ultrasound while the technician once again talks for the hour about his friends and family's strange, dramatic lives. And the simple notes telling me when to call back this or that place. Wednesday, I got calls back from several places, some just to tell me there was nothing now, but they'd call me when something came up, one to give me a list of other numbers to try, and my fellow guinea pig, Nathaniel, to ask me if I'd heard of any good studies and tell me that Parxel had a high-paying one that wasn't quite right for him. I called Parxel, waited on hold, probably a lot of calls when there's a big one in the works, and finally left a message. I got a call back from their recruiter who put me on hold while she checked my medical data against the studies she was trying to fill. Click. Hello? Uh, yes, uh, I've got one. It's, it's seven visits, 28 overnights total. It's a treatment for osteoporosis and it pays $6,960. Bingo! I got the first screening open she ha opening she had for um, 1 a.m., which is the earliest I can get down there by Greyhound. Now, I used to get $2,000 and $3,000 studies fairly often, but as my prime spots dried up for various reasons, benign medical flukes in my system that made me unfit or closings, I've gotten more and more used to doing smaller and smaller studies as often as I can, from $20, $45, or $500 one-dayers, and um, one-weekers to the occasional fifteen hundred for four days or twelve hundred for three nights the highest this year being two thousand for five nights and twelve returns the most i think i've gotten for one study was four thousand which is actually due to one of the staff mistakenly giving us a four hundred dollar check twice even my longest in-house stay of seventeen nights only netted me thirty four hundred so when i heard that figure of nearly seven thousand dollars my exhilaration was coupled with well-fed pessimism not only has my luck been mediocre the past year or two, study-wise, to the point where I feel like the powers that be are trying to convince me to get out of the business, my parents would be glad to hear, but my track record with Paroxel of late has been particularly miserable. There were a lot of long, stress-filled days trying to get to the hospital on time, paying through the nose for bus and cab fare, and getting home late at night only to find out that I hadn't made it in because of some liver enzyme or a squiggle on an EKG printout or an extra 0.0001 liters of air that my lungs just couldn't find space for or force out. Out of the seven or more times I've screened here, I've made it in twice, once a year and a half ago and once a month ago. So here I am, standing outside the Baltimore bus station, avoiding the downpour and trying to calculate at what point I should give up on the local buses and jump into one of those cabs already waiting. The bus is $3.50 round trip, and the cab is $15 one way. But when there's a possible seven grand on the line, your risk-benefit equation takes a drastically lopsided turn. And now that I'm at Parxel, sitting out in the waiting area while hip-hop videos play on the TV instead of Brenda's usual soaps, I, uh, I got here with time to spare thanks to the cabbie's short out, which... Uh, Shortcut, which rather than the MTA's 40-minute winding journey around town and through the projects got me here in 10 minutes with 15 to spare. I signed in as soon as humanly possible because though they like to pretend being first isn't important, 
all health details being equal, it's the screening logs order that can mean the difference between staying one night for $100 and staying 28 nights at $225 each plus the $650 finishing bonus. Or simply keep you from being considered in the first place as I learned the hard way when they called to tell me they already had enough healthy people before they even got to my chart. After signing in I ran to the bathroom because although they'll be wait wanting my urine I know from experience it may be hours before they get around to asking for it. 